adventure connecting our lives to help us survive so we spend our time to the hi welcome to professional insights created by dementia action alliance i'm proud to be your host laurie Sher. during our professional insights podcast we have educational conversations with professionals in the dementia community to provide answers and support to people living with dementia and their care partners. My guest today is Dr. Susan Weary. Dr. Susan Weary, MD, is the director of Aging Me, a geriatrics workforce enhancement program designated to create age and dementia-friendly health systems. Susan is best known, I think, for her membership on the Dementia Action Alliance board and her participation in our virtual discussion group during COVID called Drop In with Dr. Susan. Today, our subject is thinking and talking about suicide. Receiving a dementia diagnosis can be devastating. Many people go through a period of grief and anger and even depression. I know I did. It's also not uncommon to think, would my family be better off without me? Susan, do you hear this as well? And what are your thoughts? Is this a normal reaction? You know, it is a normal reaction, Laurie, I think, to receiving information that while I'll say that people who receive a diagnosis of dementia really due to any cause may have had some inkling that things were not going well, it's still when you hear it, it kind, kind of comes as a shock. And you mentioned that people go through stages in different ways at different times in with different feelings and one of those is absolutely once the shock passes is wondering how you're going to live with it people wonder about whether or not they can live with it and what it means to live with a diagnosis of dementia so i think the thought would my family be better off without me the thought and the feeling i don't know if i can cope with this I'd rather be dead than have dementia is something that comes to many, many people. That's very different though than saying, I wish I were dead and thinking, I will take my own life. There are many deterrents actually for that for many people. And so there's a, it's not even so much a progression as a different kind of pivot. And oftentimes what causes people to pivot towards not just the fleeting thought, I'd be better off dead, to I'm thinking about taking my own life is a kind of a pervasive feeling of hopelessness or a sense of worthlessness and feeling that that's, that those aspects of themselves that they have valued are somehow going to go away. And I think that that is one of the great challenges for um, the dementia support community and for people living with dementia to navigate that and to realize that it actually isn't a death sentence, though dementia due to many causes is a terminal illness. It isn't happening tomorrow any, any more than other terminal illnesses. So I, I guess that's how I would respond to um, how, common to it, how common it is for people to have those fleeting wishes, and sometimes even persistent wishes, wondering about how they're going to live with it. Oh, thank you. I know, Susan, I, you and I have talked about this. Um, I lost uh, a nephew to suicide, and he was uh, very, very special to my husband and I. And now, 11 years later, I still say, could have, should have, would have, if only I had, maybe I could have helped him this way. And to him, I know he thought he was doing the family a favor by taking his own life. Um, and to me, no, it, it was no favor because it, it left me with so much guilt, even now thinking if I could have only done things differently, maybe I could have helped him. So that is that is a hard question that you mentioned, is my family better off or worse off? And uh, that's a big question to, to consider. Um, what can I do to help me determine 
why I'm having these thoughts and how can I figure out, is this really what I want to do? Yes. You know, that is this really what I want to do question or why am I having these thoughts is so individualized, Laurie, that it's a little hard to to say the why for any given person, right? Um, and, um, and to really think about, um, am I doing the right thing is so hard. It, it, it assumes that there is a set of circumstances in which taking your own life is the best decision. So I think what I want to say to, to rephrase that just a little bit is this. In my experience as a geriatric psychiatrist, right, I have talked to a, a lot of people who have thought about taking their lives, who have made plans to end their lives, um, some of whom have made non-fatal attempts to die by suicide. So I've talked to a lot of people um, who have this shared experience. And what I would say is this, that the common themes for people thinking about suicide is that they get in a headset, right, where they cannot see any other solution to what they think the problem is. In other, why, in other words, suicide is an effort to solve some problem. It may be the the, the problem of psychic pain. It may be the problem of thinking of a future of living with dementia. It may be the problem of not wanting to be a burden to a family. But it's a, it's a kind of permanent solution to what more often than not is a temporary situation. And so one of the um, ways that people who are thinking about suicide, one of the things I encourage people who are thinking about suicide to grapple with it is to talk to somebody about it, to talk to somebody who is trusted, to talk to a confidant, just as your, I believe you said your nephew did, to talk to a family member, to talk to a support group. I think one of the things, Laurie, that you and I have been so excited about in the last five years, maybe decade, is the growth in the number of peer support groups led by and for people living with dementia so that one can develop over time trust and to develop the um, the support from people who kind of know what it is that a person might be going through so one talking about it and talking about the why it seems like the right solution allows other people to say yes that it is a solution to that and there are many other solutions. And one of the things that people can't do or can't do as well when they are feeling depressed and suicidal is to actually see other options. You know, I often say to people, they, they end up looking like this at their problem, their situation, and they can't see anything on the periphery. And so I think sorting out the reality of what it means to end your own life, the impact not just on yourself and, and your temporary problem, if you will, but the impact on others. You are absolutely right. There is um, There are a few losses, maybe the loss of a child, the loss of an infant child, but there are a few losses more painful, no more challenging to family. And, you know, I would say that to anyone who's thinking about suicide. It may solve something for you, but I don't think there's a family alive, family member alive or a community alive who wouldn't rather see you alive than dead. That's just the truth of it. Um, so I think talking, knowing you're not alone um, are the two critical first steps towards grappling with thinking about um, ending your own life. Oh, thank you. And, you know, I, I hear in many, many of our discussion groups, uh, people thinking that uh, they're embarrassed by these thoughts. They think they're the only ones with these thoughts. And we, we often end up saying, no, many of us have these thoughts. And I think it's important for people living with dementia to, to know through your support groups or through your family, um, you're not the only one having these thoughts you're it, it 
tends to be many of us that, that go through the thoughts. So thank you for, for making sure and point that out. It's an important one. Well, Lord, uh, before we leave that particular question, and I know we have some others to get to, but before we leave that one, you know, I mentioned peer support, I mentioned family, I mentioned friends. I didn't mention professional support people. And of course, we're always out there. But the other resource I realized that I wanted to mention are the number of online resources by suicide prevention groups and they are critical um they've just come out with a new number and we should find that for the uh to share that with people at the end of the podcast um i don't remember what it is it's not uh 911 but it's something like that and um and that gives you 24 7 access to anonymous support from a trusted you know suicide prevention group to um if you're not quite ready to talk to family and friends so talk to someone um identify that trusted person thanks laurie for letting me interject that no good that's a good point and actually i should have brought that up it's 988 988 thank you i know that changed it used to be really long 1-800 something something but 988 Right. We'll add that at the end of the podcast. So thank you for mentioning that. And we're running short on time, but um, another question for you. We hear much about a person's right to die with dignity. What's the difference between su- <laughs> pardon me, suicidal thoughts and actions versus dying with de- dignity? What What is dying with dignity? Yeah, so a lot of the, so I think there are now about 17 states who have passed legislation that give adults the right to request lethal medication when they have been diagnosed with a terminal illness and have about six months to live. And most states have some guardrails on that, right? You have to ask for it twice. You have, there has to be some time in between the first and second ask to make sure this isn't a, a, um, an impulsive decision um, and that the person has made it without coercion, without undue influence from others and so forth. So with all of these protections, a person who is in um, pain that is no longer bearable, and that could be physical or psychic pain, emotional pain, physical pain, who has been diagnosed with a terminal illness, six months to live, may request um, pills to end their own life. Um, They may not request that somebody else administer it to them. So you're about to see that there are some some restrictions here. Um, And um, and it is done in a planned way. And usually family and friends or trusted people are there when the person takes the lethal medication. And that's often referred to as death with dignity. Other people call it physician assisted suicide. But that's that is that very narrow definition now i know some people living with dementia because i've had these conversations actually with folks at our discussion group um, believe that people with dementia should also have that right and currently people living with dementia are excluded because there is an assumption at the point when you're uh, living with dementia say due to alzheimer's disease and you only have six months to live that implies advanced stages and it implies that you wouldn't have capacity to be able to make an informed decision and they don't want somebody else making that decision for you some advocacy groups have argued for the right to die with dementia by giving an advanced care plan an advanced directive that specifically authorizes someone to um to obtain that lethal um, medication. What we've been talking about here, though, is the person who is feeling worthless, hopeless, helpless, can't see another um, uh, solution, and who in that context decides to end their own life. It is usually done privately. It is often done violently. It is often done by gunshot or by hanging or by pill ingestion. And it is, I'm so sorry to say, oftentimes quite impulsive. And that's why one of the big interventions in suicide prevention is making sure anybody with a gun has it locked up and the bullets separate 
And anybody who is thinking about suicide puts lethal medication and other poisons out of their own reach. So those are starkly different situations, aren't they? They are. Well, Susan, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us again. You're such a support to DAA. So thank you for your time. Um, I'm delighted to be here, Laurie. Um, I'd also like to thank you, our audience, for joining Dementia Action Alliance for this Professional Insights podcast. Please visit our website, daanow.org, to view other podcasts, find valuable resources, and find ways to connect with other people living with dementia through our virtual discussion and engagement groups. Dementia Action Alliance is committed to enhancing lives, connecting people, and increasing understanding. Thank you and have a lovely day. So we live a life to the fullest. We can.